Hey guys, it's Sal here and this is the Samsung Galaxy A10. I'm going to be unboxing it and doing a quick review. Without further ado, let's get to the video. I got the A10 on Jumia and it's currently Jumia's mobile week. Apart from getting the best prices for these smartphones, Jumia is also giving 3 months of data to the first 200 customers daily and a 10% discount when you buy 3 or more accessories. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can get started. In the box of the A10, the first thing we get is another box housing the quick start guide and the warranty card. Underneath that, we've got the A10 itself, which we'll get to later. Next up is the power adapter, charging cable, headphones, and the SIM ejector tucked away down under. It doesn't come with a screen protector or any case, unlike some of the devices in its price range. That's everything we get in the box. And looking at the A10 now, on that wrap, we have the main highlights Samsung is showing off, and that's the Infinity V display, testing on 5 megapixel cameras, and a slim body design. Taking the plastic off the device, we're greeted with the plastic back which is a fingerprint magnet and that 6.2 inch display up front. There is a microphone up at the top of the device and another microphone at the bottom to help with stereo audio recording. Still underneath it, we've got the charging port and the headphone jack. We've got the power button and the volume rocker keys to the right, SIM slot to the left which has a space for two nano SIMs and an SD card. On the back, we've got the 30 megapixel camera with flash, Samsung branding, and on the lower part of the back, we've got the speaker which is backward firing and also some certifications which are not obvious. The front of the device has the front facing camera, speaker, and at the top of it is the ambient light sensor. It it took 1 minute and 50 seconds to boot up, which leads us to Samsung's One UI on top of Android 9. The A10 6.2 inch IPS display has a screen resolution set at 1520 by 720, so it's a 720p display and it didn't even feel like one. Screen to body ratio is 81.6% thanks to that Infinity V notch at the top and the lower chain and it's got a PPI of 269. As I mentioned, we've got One UI here and I must say that scrolling was quite fast. Samsung did a good job with One UI and one of the things I quickly did was to switch the device to dark mode. You also get the adaptive brightness so it adjusts based on the scenes you're in and if you decide to use a screen protector, you can bump up the sensitivity. On the A10, we've got 2GB of RAM and 32GB of storage. When I had it newly, I had 9.1GB used up already by system data which leaves me with 22GB of actual storage. One UI is quite the functional and customizable OS here running on Android 9 Pi and it feels like Samsung put some of their finesse into this device despite that low price point. I even got a security patch update as well. There's no fingerprint scanner here so the default extra security method you get here apart from the pin, person and password is the face recognition which Samsung says is less secure so I would not recommend using it, I would recommend using a pattern or a pin or something. However, face unlock was speedy and it worked on time when I used it but I personally wouldn't be using it. The A10 runs with an Exynos 7884 chip which is an octa-core processor and it's also got a Mali G71 GPU. The processor was able to handle multitasking just fine and multi-window which worked effortlessly. It's one of the features we've known with Samsung for quite a while before it was normalized. Gaming on the other hand was okay, PUBG set the default graphics to medium which worked for me and I didn't have any complaints about gameplay. The only thing I noticed was that when it lagged, it lagged and when it didn't, it worked fine. At 43,000 Naira, a 3400 miller and power battery is quite tolerable. The Huawei Y6 Prime is 900 Naira more and that has 3020 miller and power. So that's a difference in something around that price range. I said that battery dropped but it was not too significant and other things to note is that the A10 comes with Bluetooth 5.0 and 4G LTE. The A10 has a backward firing speaker like what we saw on the Spark 3 and sound quality was just fine. Just like the Spark 3, the sound also gets muffled when it's placed down but when you're watching videos or playing games, that won't be a problem. When you open the camera and switch it to self mode, there's this animation that shows up. That same animation is also apparent for face recognition. And as far as the specs on the camera, for the 13 megapixel f1.9 camera on the back, we've got photo mode which has a normal setting and a zoom setting and then we can go up to 4 times digital. This setting is also available for the video mode and there's also pro mode where you can control ISO, white balance and exposure. We've also got panorama mode for wider shots. For the 5 megapixel f2.0 front camera, it's just photo and video and you can't zoom in or out in this mode. Both the front and the back cameras can record in full HD which is actually a good thing and you get to choose high efficiency video or picture formats but the only problem I have with those is that you might not be able to use them on social media or use them in a project. Picture quality on the Samsung Galaxy A10 was okay and I thought image processing was great and the only thing I felt was hindering it was the megapixel size especially for the front camera. The pictures did come out looking quite soft and as far as low light went, the flash didn't make much of a difference as it was the screen flash and not an actual flash. 
flash. Autofocus on the A10's camera was also great for the price and it also fairly stabilizes the shots. Alright, so this is the front facing camera video test of the Samsung Galaxy A10. Um, the video quality is actually exposed very well because image processing is not that high end here. But um, yeah, I think it looks okay on the face. And you can also adjust um, the exposure a bit to compensate for that overexposure at the back there. But um, this is the highest it can go. It can go beyond this. Um, the Samsung Galaxy A10 also records in stereo audio as well, which is a good thing. And it also records in 1080p as well as 720p. But you can't zoom in or anything in the video. So let me know what you guys think about the video quality and the sound quality. As far as my verdict, I think that the A10 comes highly recommended for the price after using it for quite some time. If not for the build quality, the device felt closer to something higher in price. And the one you are experience here definitely adds to it. Alright guys, so based on this quick review that you've seen, what do you think about the Samsung Galaxy A10? Is it worth it to you or do you think it could have been better? for this price range um let me know in the comment section down below also if you have any questions do let me know there and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll be the first to see all my new videos thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video